Good morning and happy first day of the week, everybody. Have a blessed Sunday. Those of you that are headed out to a service, those of you that are just hungering down to enjoy the weekend, we thank God for all of you that have joined us, whether early this morning, later today, or whenever you get an opportunity. We pray that the word is being a blessing to you, to lift you, and, and to, to get you prepared for meeting the King of Kings. And we're going to pray. We're having a little issue with our sound system this morning, but we're going to see. Uh, I got another idea, so we'll see what happens. We're going to pray going to the Word. Um, this is part three of Living in Eternity with God. Um, this is our Real Talk segment, which is actually part 15 of the segment, and, and part three of Eternity with God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we glorify your holy name. You are worthy to be praised. There is no other God like you. There is no other God but you. We thank you. We ask that you forgive us for all of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness and blood guiltiness. Lord, if there's anything that we've done, doing, or even things that we might be going to do that is not pleasing to you, we ask that you cancel that out and cast it away from us. In Jesus' name, for we want to please you. We're not interested in anything or anybody else. We want to be pleasing to you. So we ask that you lead us and guide us. Anoint our ears to hear, our minds to understand, our hearts to receive what thus says the Lord. Let us speak and live the truth. Give us clean hearts and the right spirit and the mind of Christ. Rebuke Satan on every hand all over this planet where he will come against your people. And we give you glory. For you are our, you are our light. Bless the name of Jesus and you are our salvation. And we give the Lord the glory. Amen. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, praise the Lord. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Get your notepad ready. We have quite a bit of scripture. We're going to start off in the book of Acts, chapter 1. Yes, he is Christian. Yes, he is You shall not be my God. Yeah. You shall have me for a second. You shall hide me with the name of Jesus. Bless his name. The glory to the name of Jesus. Yes, glory to the name of Jesus. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. We thank God for everything that he's done, what he's going to do. Bless the name of the Lord. Just wanted to give you a little bit of that. Praise God. Um, like I said, having a problem with the sound system for some reason. Um, but everything else seems to be fine. We just thank God. Amen. It could be your way for the Lord saying, play your own music. Glory <laughs> to God. God is a good God. Yes, he is. So we're going to start from the reminder. We're going to start with the reminder. In the book of Acts, verse 1, 
uh, chapters 9 through 11. It says, Now when he, Jesus, had spoken these things while they watched, the disciples, they watched, he was taken up in a cloud, uh, received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Let you know that the angelic or the supernatural can take the form of human beings. God bless you, Deacon. Amen. Praise God. So, we, we, we started in Acts 1, verse 11. It says, Who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. I can take that and run with it. This same Jesus. This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Verse 12, then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, uh, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. We, read, we realized that this brought us into the realization that the Sabbath is still right, even after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, even after his ascension. Praise God, they still call the seventh day the Sabbath day. Bless God. So, Jesus said, behold, this is what he said in Revelation Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. So many people have asked, Well, where is he at? Y'all been saying this for years. Where's the promise of his coming? Well, 2 Peter 3 and 9, it says, The Lord is not slack or careless or loose concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Adonai is long-suffering, meaning he's showing great restraint. Even when we wreck his, and we say wreck his nerves, even when we provoke him to anger, amen, he does not want to destroy man. That's never been his, his agenda. Praise God. God bless the providence. It, it, it has been his desire to live with us throughout eternity for us to honor and worship him. And in that, he blesses us and he keeps us. But because of rebellion and because we wanted to follow the enemy, amen. And, and people say, no, I don't want to worship the devil. No, I would never. That's not what I did. If you don't, here, there's only two choices. Either you're saved because you believe in Christ and you've accepted him as your savior and you're walking in that light, or you're not saved. And by default, your non-salvation puts you in the category of a worshiper of the enemy. You just follow him by default. Well, no, I got my own mind. No, that, that doesn't count. You either serve the Lord or you serve the devil. You got to choose one way or another. There is no in-between. I, I, I plead with you to stop playing with these celebrities. And, and I don't know when preachers became celebrities. I really don't get it. And I really don't get it. I noticed that when people start make, making over $100,000, something happens. Um, I, it's like they lose the humility. And then you have the wannabes that are trying to live large, but they still not doing what God wants them to do. We get so sidetracked with doing stuff. And souls are dying. Every day. Today, some souls went straight into hell. Some souls went straight to be in the presence of the Lord. Somebody left here. And, and we don't know the time. There's a, there's, a, there's a short movie that DJ and I watched. And I believe my grandchildren, when they were here, we watched it together. Called The Appointment. And it's, it's, it shows the, the long suffering, the patience of God. And, and until we push him to a point where I've given you time. I, and, and, and I don't know what more you want from me because you have an appointment. And, and I'm not going to be the spoiler alert, but look it up. It's on YouTube. It's called The Appointment. And, and we have to get to a point that, that we understand God is not going to retaliate against our sin by killing us, but he's giving us time. He's patient. But eventually, it's going to come to a point where the Lord says, it is enough. And then while we're waiting we, and given an opportunity to come to him through the door, which is Christ, people don't want to say, 
um, Jesus is not Jesus is the way. He is the only way to God. You can try it. You can do any other faith, religion, whatever you want to do. But there's only one way to God, the Father. John, John 10 and 7 through 9. John 10, 7 through 9. I could use 10, but you hear me say it most of the time. Said then Jesus, then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, the Lord said. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture, good eating. This lets us know that he's not slack concerning uh, the human race, only one race, amen, and that he, as, as our creator, he's given us an opportunity, even his enemies, he's given everybody an opportunity to be saved. It's not that hard. But I, I, I don't want to give up all the things I got. One of the things that we misunderstand or misinterpret is that if we have stuff, we got to give it all away because, you know, we got to be humble. You can have stuff and still be humble, but you got to understand there has to come a time where you say, God, I thank you for the things. But if I did have these things, I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to walk right before you. If I watch my enemy prosper, I'm still going to praise you. Because they may be having their heaven here, but God, we got a place. That, that, new, that new eternity, that, that not eternity, but that, that new heaven and that new earth. And, and everybody talks about, we go into heaven. Heaven wasn't made for you. Stop it. Glory to God. Now, what I will say is that the new Jerusalem, because God himself and the Lamb will be there and the angels are there, we have heaven on earth. But the heaven where the Lord God himself abides, that was not made for us. And, and we've taught it, and y'all forgive me for teaching it. Amen. We, oh, we're on our way to, up to heaven. Here's the other thing about that. The Bible says in Revelation, when it came to the people of God, they were under the throne. And, and, and when they were getting a little antsy um, how long, they were given white robes. So we, we don't know, we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, but we don't know exactly where we are as far as heaven is concerned. And I know folk are going to talk to me about this, but then, they, I mean, we can talk about up in heaven and anywhere Jesus is, heaven is there. And if you're using it in that concept, so be it. But God's abode is not for us. We can be taken up into heaven, but we have to understand there is a space that we don't cross over into God's realm himself. This is one of the reasons I believe that he's going to bring New Jerusalem down out of heaven and he's going to dwell with us here on earth because his place is his place. And, and, and folks don't like to admit that. Just like people used to get upset with me when I said Jesus had to take a bath. He was human. He had to take a bath. He got sweaty. He got musty. He was human. He had to go to the bathroom. He was human. He came in human form. And if people get a, oh, that, you should say that about Jesus. This is how he identifies with us. So that when we go to him as our high priest, who is seated at the right hand of, of, of the throne of God, he's right there at the word of God, right there. He's interceding for us. How could he intercede for the human and understand our frailties and understand our hurts and understand our pains and understand our sorrows if he did not come 100% man, although he was still God, and can't nobody do that for Jesus. Amen. And we have to recognize he's long-suffering. The, the, what John and the old uh, prophets of the Old Testament saw was visions for an appointed time. And those visions are coming to pass even now. Y'all seeing stuff happen in Jerusalem. You seeing stuff happen with Israel. You seeing stuff happening all over the world. Earthquakes, 
that, that folks never had before, sinkholes are swallowing whole homes, and it's not just in Florida. Um, it, we got fires that, for whatever the reason, can't be put out, and, and, and forests being uh, consumed. It, it's just a whole bunch of things that are going on. We, we've got um, rabbit, not rabbit, uh, but animals that are sick, that are running around and, and, and killing people and then people going around killing animals just for fun. This is the mentality of what's happening. This is why all creation is groaning and moaning that we get ourselves together because even though the creatures were made before us, they wait for us to get back in place. We got out of place and when we got out of place, they got out of place. And so we have to come back to the humility. Ooh, you can look good, you can smell good, you can drive well, you can live well, you can eat well, and but but don't forget who blessed you with it. You're not a self-made prop. Well, let me take that back. There are some self-made, but you're not a self-made man or woman. You are wonderfully and fearfully made by the Lord. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to accept it. You can say that God don't exist, but because you exist. That's proof that there's a God. Because if you want to say you came from a monkey, that's your business. If you want to say you came from prime or ooze, that's your business. Anything to take away from the glory and the grandeur and the mightiness and the divinity of God, that's what has been taught. They teach in school, the earth is billions of years old. Who, where? According to the word of God, beginning with creation, it's about 6,000 years old, period. I don't care what the rings in the trees, they say the rings in the trees say. We go according to the word. They teach about dinosaurs being froze out and all this other stuff. When we know there were dinosaurs, we have the proof. We got the bone. They were in the garden. They, they were in Eden. They weren't hurting nobody. That was not why God created them. They were there. Everybody just want to talk about the birds and the bees and the, and, the, and the lambs and stuff. But there were also other beasts, they called them, beasts of the field. And, and, and these things had existed. But when we messed up, and when I say we, mankind, had messed up, everything went out of sync. So it's time for us to get back in sync. We got to be ready and spotless and blameless. And because when we pray, people say, well, why would you pray? You always ask for forgiveness. What did you do? It's not so much what I did. It's, Lord, maybe I thought wrong. Maybe I watched something that you didn't want me to watch. It, it, it didn't seem anything wrong with it. But God, maybe there was a language that you didn't want me to listen to. Or maybe there was too much of the language. And, 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 and that's not what you wanted. Maybe it took my attention off of going into your words so that you could speak to me. Whatever it was, Lord, maybe I thought about somebody and I thought wrong. It not having to be sensual, just had a bad idea about somebody. I, I don't know. Lord, just in case something may be in my heart that I don't know is there, God, I repent. And this is what we do every day. God, we go outside. We're around people. We travel and go to the doctors, wherever we're going. We, I mean, we're around spirits, evil spirits all the time. We don't know what's walked with us into the house. This is why I tell y'all, cover your door, cover your windows in the blood of Jesus. So when you come in the house, whatever was following you around that wasn't God, got to stay outside. Amen. And then you got people coming in your house and bringing stuff in your home. But we got to recognize that we have to anoint our homes where we live. Our home is our sanctuary. Everybody... Folks that know us, I mean, really, really know us, no, you don't come running up in here. No, you don't just, oh, I was in the neighborhood and I just stopped by. <laughs> no, that's not how this works. You call, you let us know that, that you would like to come by, and then we will deal with it. Folks say, y'all so, y'all so bougie, y'all let nobody come in your house. We have to understand stuff. COVID is not over, people of God. And I don't know where everybody's been or who they've been around or who they've been around people who... They've been around other people. I don't know who got what and where they come from. Even when people have to come in to do maintenance, after they come in here, we spray up everything. They go to different people's houses. We don't know what they got. And we have to understand. One of my, my daughters in the Lord was going to church, and she just found a church to go to, and she was going to church. And they had to shut down the whole, whole church and quarantine it because they had a COVID outbreak. 
And people talk about gather together, gather together, gather together if that's what the Lord says. But you got to recognize there are people that are coming in and, and, and they have stuff. And some people are so evil. Y'all wake up. Some people are so evil that if they are sick, they'll just come and get in the midst and cough and sneeze just because they know they can spread stuff. We, When I worked for early intervention, early intervention of the early intervention unit for AIDS when it started to really come out um, and, and I was working with the state, um, one of the things that, that we recognize, we got some evil people. We have one sister that was sending little coffins to every man she slept with because she said, he gave it to me and I'm gonna give it to everybody, every man I can, I can think of. And she gave them each a death sentence. That's just evil, praise God. But even then, if she repented, God would still save somebody. That ain't fair, but that's God. If we come to him, regardless how raggedy we are, regardless of what we have done, what we have thought, what we have said, what we have listened to, regardless of all that, God is willing and able to save us. People said he'll pick us up from the guttermost to the uttermost. Praise God. So we have to recognize he's coming back for us to be ready. It's a readiness. We have to get prepared. It, no, he's not coming tonight unless the Antichrist is in office, but, but he's not coming tonight for the body of Christ, but he may come for you. So we don't know when he's coming back, but we, we can see the signs of the time. Revelation 22 verses three and, 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 and five, when we get to glory, it says, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. We're still serving people. We're not just laying around enjoying the view. We, we, we shall serve him. What are we going to do? I don't know. It didn't tell us everything we're going to do, but we know that there's still going to be kingdoms. There's still going to be kings because the kings are going to bring in their stuff to the honor and the glory of God. They're going to bring it into New Jerusalem. He didn't tell us everything. John saw some stuff that he did not write because even when those seven thunders thundered, he was getting ready to write what they said. And the said, don't, mm -mm. you don't tell that part. He heard it. He's the only human being that was on the planet that knew something that nobody else knew, that heard something that nobody else heard. Now, whether or not God caused him to forget it, I don't know, but he heard it and he was told not to write it. It wasn't none of our business. And he says, and they shall see his face and his name shall, I love this, and his name shall be in their forehead. And there shall be no night there. This is in the city. There shall be no night there. And they need no candle, need the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign for, they shall rule forever and ever. What are we really? Mm -hmm. Whatever God says. The name, here's the thing. The name of God, and, and this thing blessed me yesterday when I was studying. It said, the name of God will be in their foreheads. Of all the servants, it's going to be embedded in. Not just on where you can wipe it off and knock it off, but it's embedded. It becomes a part of our mindset. It becomes part of the way we think. It becomes part of our imagination because the name of God is in our foreheads. Now remember this. When we study the names of God and, and, and his character and what it represents, God's name is a representation of his internal character and, and his servants, his saints, will have the privilege and honor wearing his seal of ownership. Somebody say, ain't nobody gonna own me. Oh, oh help me, Holy Ghost. You either owned by God or you're owned by Satan. You don't own yourself. Rest assured, this is your purgatory right here. You between heaven and hell right here. This is the time you get it right. Can't nobody pray. I, I love y'all for praying for family. Keep praying for family. I pray for mine all the time. But we can't save them. So for you to stress yourself into a frenzy, to get sick because of what folks is doing, that's on you. The Bible tells us that the Lord cares for us 
So cast your cares on him. God is not that I don't care, but I can't care and not do anything about it. So I put it on you because you know how to handle it. And that's what it does. And y'all, when God starts dealing with these folks, mind your business. Stay out the way. Let him deal with them. But, but I don't want to see them hurt. But you want to see them saved. Let God deal with them. Help them if necessary, but let God deal with him. We ask God to do stuff, and then we get all in the way. Praise God. Now, here's what it says in, 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 in Revelation 19, Revelation 19 and 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And we're talking about Jesus. And he had a name. Watch this. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. I'm going somewhere with this. Then in John 30, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. So whatever the Lord's name is will be embedded in the forehead of the saints of God. It's an unknown name. We won't know the name, but it's going to be embedded. It's a, it is a badge of ownership. Somebody said, well, why I got to be owned? Let me tell you what else owns you. Since, since, since a lot of people say, I ain't going to be owned by nobody. If you hate somebody, you're owned by that person that you hate. Because it's taking your energy to hate them. So they own you. If you get to a point where you're so angry with somebody that you can't rest at night, you can't sleep because you're plotting, or, or you hoping something happens to them so you can glow, they own you. You're owned by your your emotion, you're owned by your anger, you're owned by your jealousy, you're owned by your envy, you're owned by your discontentment, you're owned by that spirit of discord, you're owned by disobedience, you're owned by lying, you're owned by hypocrisy, you're owned by uh, manipulating the word, you're owned, and some of y'all are owned by preachers, and, 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 and you, you can't pay your bills, but you better not miss out on blessing them for their birthday. And I don't want to call it a blessing because it's bullying people into giving. And that's not what the Lord said. He said he loves a cheerful giver. You can't be cheerful when you got bills to do, but you're so scared that, that you're going to be talked about in the pulpit or you're going to lose your position, praise God, that, that you're going to do everything you can to honor the pastor, she, he, amen, and some of y'all shim. Amen, but let's go. You want to do all that. You're miserable, but yet you want to be involved. We have to get to a point where we're giving. We're giving as unto the Lord. And if I don't have it, I'm not giving it. And if you don't line up with the word of God, I'm not giving it. I'm not planting seed in ministry that goes against what the word of God says. There's folks that I know we, 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 we lost um, what my children call Grandpa Clean. Um, Bishop uh, Richard White, and we don't let everybody, we ain't let everybody know we know these people. Some of these folks that y'all call famous, we knew way before they was famous. Some of these artists and choirs, known way before they were famous. And some folks have no, no idea. We get caught in fame instead of faith. And our faith has to come alive so that God can use us. God would bless us with a lot of stuff, but we can't handle it properly. So he gives us what we are capable of handling that we don't lose our soul. So whatever God's name is, is in our forehead. Now, during the tribulation, Satan mimics this. He, he, he's an originator of the lie. That's what he is, the father of the lies. That's what he does. But he wants to imitate. He don't want to be holy. He don't want to be clean. He don't want to... He don't want to ask for forgiveness because he just who he is. But he mimics. Here it says during the tribulation, Revelation, let's go to the Bible. Revelation 13, verses 16 and 18. And he, the Antichrist, shall, or the devil, because the devil is using him, shall cause all, both small children and great, rich and poor, free and bond. You can be in jail. Amen. Praise God. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Imitation. And that no man, and here's why, that no man 
might buy or sell unless he had the mark of the name of the beast. We got the mark of our God. He wants you to have the mark of the beast or the number of his name. And here's wisdom. Let him that under, hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Man number is six. And his number is six hundred three score and six. A score is twenty years. So it's six six six. And if you understand 666, you have the dragon, the beast, you have the dragon, the antichrist, the false prophet. They, 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 it's, it's in threes. We have the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. Man is spirit, soul, and body. God has a way of doing things, and the enemy mimics. This will be a visible mark embedded in the foreheads of those that accept the, the, the mark of the beast. It will be unreversible it, it can be removed because they willingly this you willingly accept it it's nobody gonna grab you and make you take the mark you have to willfully accept it it, it can't be forced on you because that's not accepting he wants you to willfully um, accept it and you make a public show that you belong spirit soul and your body to the enemy and the kingdom of the beast I looked in the Greek, and the Greek word for mark is called charagma and is associated with the branding of livestock uh, so that you could tell who they are legally uh, belong to. If we had cattle, and, and my cattle got into uh, Dick and Flood's uh, yard, and they all look alike, how we tell the difference is that her seal is different than my seal. So we know who belongs to what animal belongs to who. And, and and so not not trying to call us cattle, praise God, but it is a symbol that we belong to the Lord. We're marked. The Holy Ghost is our seal. We're marked. And, and the only way after you are saved that you're going to miss heaven or miss glory or miss the new earth and the new Jerusalem is if you walk outside of God. You walk outside of the ark of safety. People can turn. The Bible said that if you're not fit for the kingdom, if you put your hand to the plow and you stop and turn back, you ain't fit for the kingdom. This is the word of God. I'm giving you word. In the book of Esther, uh, verse, chapter 8, verse 8, it said we learned that once a king has sealed the document or anything else, the action is irreversible. Once you are sealed by whoever you freely yield yourself to, you seal your eternal fate. That's it. This is why when, when folks are, are going through the great tribulation in, in that part where you have to accept that mark or lose your life, praise God, it, it, it's, it, it, it's something that you, you, you can't do anything about once it's in your head. It, it's amazing how the enemy used the head and the hand. And it's the right hand. And I thought about, it's the right hand of fellowship. It's the right hand of importance. That's why he does what he does. And, and he's got them on, on, every, on every, every aspect. Praise God. It can never be reversed. Ever. Once you've accepted the mark. There's a movie called Six. Just the word, Six. Look it up on YouTube. And just watch it. Watch it to the end and listen to what the man said after he accepted the mark. Listen. When I first watched this and listened, chills ran up and down me. Because I said, my God, that's the, th that's the thing that you know that you have damned yourself. But there's nothing you can do about it. Because once you give yourself over and accept the mark, that's a sign that you have joined the kingdom of Satan. And, and this is why we tell people all the time. Let's get right now so we don't get messed up later. Bless the name of Jesus. So, Revelation 22. Let's go back. Let's go um, go back to that. Revelation 22 and 12. And behold, this is what the Lord says, I come quickly. I'm coming unexpectedly. I'm coming soon, if you will. And my reward is with me to give every man according to as his work shall be. This states that Jesus came once as a baby. He's coming back the next time as the judge of the world. 
Revelation 22 and 18. It says, For I, John, testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man, as person, uh, shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. This is a serious warning and one not to be ignored. It states that if anyone, that means the fivefold ministry, the bishops, the elders, the pope, if anybody takes away or adds to, this is going to be a problem for you. Amen. Bless God. And this is what it says. It's been established. It cannot be changed. You can't add to it. You can't take away from it. Revelation, the, the revelation of God, um, he said, I'm going to add the plagues. And, and I went to look some of them up. I didn't get them all. Praise God. But I, I got some of the, the first ones. It says, there's the plague that causes painful sores on all those that have accepted that mark on their forehead and, or in their hand. All of them are going to break out in painful sores. They're going to have these sores for the rest of their lives and then be cast into eternity into the lake of fire. That's a hot. Whew, Jesus, have mercy. We got to get get to a, we, we got to wake up. The, the, if, we, if they accept the mark, and they worship the image of the beast, painful sores are going to be all over their body. Then there's the plague that turns the sea into blood and kills everything that's living in the sea. The stench. I don't know how many people have been around blood that's not pure. If you've been in a hospital or you've been somewhere else and, and it's just, it's a stench. But can you imagine a whole sea a whole river of nothing but dead blood and everything fish turtles whatever everything dies so now you got the stench of that help us jesus that's 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 the second part of it and then there's a third plague that that causes the rivers and the springs of the water to turn to blood then there's the scorching of the sun um which means that the sun is going to come so hot that it's going to put set people's skin on fire. The, the fifth plague um, is darkness. And, and, and it, again, it has pain. Praise God that it's the, the sores. All of this is just a taste of hell. The plagues are also described what being in the lake of fire will be like with people going into convulsions because of the pain and the sores. Because them things not going away. All of these things, remember, they have been set. Whatever happens to you after you accept the mark of the beast, you're going to take that into eternity with the other torments. I don't know why folk won't get saved. I don't know why people just won't. Listen, my thing is, give them an opportunity. If you don't believe that, that he will do what he said he'd do, give him a chance. The Lord said, try me. Try me and see. Won't he do what he said he would do? He's not going to do what you want him to do all the time, but he's going to do what he said he would do in the word of God. This is who he is. Remember these plagues and others are a series of events that happened before the battle of Armageddon. Uh, the focus is on the, hit, the end of human history and the return of Jesus Christ. The saints of God have no need to fear. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. This is why I'm not afraid to read the book of Revelation. I'm not afraid to watch Revelation. On They got a, a, a nice animation of, of the book of Revelation that you can actually watch it from from chapter 1 all the way to 22. It's a wonderful experience. Praise God. And, and that you, you don't have to be afraid of it. You see the things that are going to happen. But it ain't got nothing to do with you. You're a child of God. You're born again. You've been sealed by the Holy Ghost. And then the Lord is going to put his name that nobody knows but him. And he's going to embed that into your forehead. He owns you throughout eternity. And we're going to be happy about that. Because the best thing to be, the best person to be owned by is the Lord God himself. I'm telling you, he's, he's the, man, I'd be his slave any day. Praise God, I'm willing. Let, chain me up, Lord. Yoke me up, God. However, it is, let me belong to you. Because if I don't belong to you, then I belong to the enemy who don't like me. He don't love me. He just wants to use man to get back at God. He don't care nothing about man. And, and yes, he will give you a false sense of security and a false sense of blessing. And he will let you make all the money that, that this world can uh, contain. But afterwards, 
you got to pay his price. And his price is too high because it's your eternal soul. So look into that. Now, let's go back to Jerusalem. Go back to New Jerusalem. Take a look at the gates and the foundation of the walls of the enormous Golden City. If you went to my page, I stopped putting stuff on everybody's page because I know how I am. I get annoyed when folks put stuff on my page. They ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. Amen. And and and, and sometimes I that snooze them for 30 days. Please do. Because I just some stuff. Because a lot of stuff posts, I don't know nothing about this stuff. Amen. So, but but I stop send it to everybody on their page. But if you go on my page, you will see New Jerusalem, how big it is compared to the United States. And, and, and it's huge. And it's as wide as it is high. Praise God. So it, it's, a, it's, it's not a little place. Glory to God. It's a golden and gemmed city. Revelation 21 and 14, it says, And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Judas Iscariot, was, and folks keep saying Judas was an apostle. Judas was not an apostle. That The apostleship didn't come until after the discipleship. There's a lot of people that want to be apostles, but they have never been a disciple. Praise God. So we have to understand there's a discipleship. There's a learning process first before you get elevated to the next, uh, to the next level. And, and it says there's 12. Judas is not there. And I'm going to give you Bible. As a disciple of Christ, Judas Iscariot did not hold the office of apostle. He held the office of bishop and overseer. Let's see what the Bible says. Acts 1 and 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric let another take. Judas was replaced by Matthias. Let's see what the Bible says. Verse 21. It says, Wherefore of these men which have com which have comfort com complained with us all accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in among us and out among us. Verse 22. Beginning from the baptism of John, they've been with us, until the same day that he was taken up from us must one be ordained to be witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, whose surname or last name was Justice, and Matthias, verse 24. And they prayed first and said to the Lord, Thou, Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men. We can't go by what they do, but you know their hearts. Show whether of these two hath chosen, have you chosen. Verse 25, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship. That's when it came to fruition. From which Judas, by transgression, fell from being inducted into the apostleship. And he might go to his own place. He had a place in hell just prepared for him. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell on who? Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. He became an apostle. No, Judas wasn't there. So inside of the New Jerusalem walls, in one of the gems that make up the walls, in the is the name Matthias, not Judas. Each apostle has his name in one of the walls' foundations. You can look up the gemstone. Um, Paul, who was also an apostle, now this is this may upset some folks, but Paul, who was also an apostle. But his name isn't in the foundations of the walls of the golden city. And I wanted to know why. Because Paul, although he was called by Christ, was not a witness from the beginning. He was not a witness in the sense of yielding to John the Baptist. He was not a witness in the teachings of the Lord. He did not follow Christ at that time. He was not there to witness the ascension. He didn't, he didn't follow in Jesus' ministry from the beginning. And, and why is that important to us today? Because it shows us that you can be an apostle of Christ without actually being with him physically on this planet while he worked on earth. People don't like it. That's just the way it is. There's no more curse because perfection is restored. The throne is in the midst. 
It, it gives the administration is pure perfection. We as servants of God will um, see him face to face and, and be perfect in our obedience before him. My God, just to be perfect in our obedience. We will see his face because he's perfectly changed us so that we can look on him and not blow up or catch on fire. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. God's name is in our foreheads, signifying perfect identification with God Almighty. God is the light of the city, giving it perfect, unblocked illumination. Praise God. God will reign forever, and we will give him perfect exaltation, not exaltation. It's E-X-U-L-T-A-T-I-O-N, to exalt, ex exalt. Have to, they almost sound the same, is to be extremely joyful, to exalt in the sense of E-X-A-L-T-A-T-I-O-N, is to lift him up. So there's a difference in the words. One, you praising and dancing and, and joyful. The other, you're bowing before him in, in humility and, and, and honoring his power by humbling yourself before him. And both will be a joyful action for us that have seen that see him we're going to bask in the presence of El Shaddai forever praise God living with the Lord in New Jerusalem will be a totally unique experience something that's never been before this will be a sin-free community pure clean safe and full of righteousness a holy city at each of the city there's 12 gates 12 gates on either side May north west east south north south east west Praise God, there's three gates on either side, making the number of 12, and they're all made of one giant pearl. I don't know if the pearl is round. I don't know if they made the gate, and, and, and the gate itself looks like a gate. Don't know how it works, but we'll find out. Praise God. And at each gate, there's an angel posted. Now, I don't know why. I didn't ask God why, but there is an angel po po posted at each gate. On each pearl, on each pearly gate is the name of one of the tribes of Israel, not one of the races, one of the tribes of Israel. For all eternity, God will never forget the tribes of Israel. This is the promise that they have. This is also shows our inheritance, our heritage with Israel. We're all together in, in the kingdom of God. The eternal testimony of the apostles is permanently embedded in the walls of of God, the foundation of these walls are beautiful. I looked up some of the stones. This shows and proves to us that regardless of what we call ourselves as ministers, a church, a temple, a cathedral, a tabernacle, a sanctuary, whatever we call the building, if it's not built on the, call yourself what you want, but if your ministry, your church, your cathedral, your temple, tabernacle, whatever you want to call it, your sanctuary, is not built on the foundation of the apostolic doctrine. And I'm not talking about apostolic church. I'm talking about the apostles and the prophets' doctrine. If it's not built on that, then the people of God don't need to be involved in it. Let's see what the Word says. Ephesians 2 and 20. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Not on John the Baptist, not on Paul, not on Peter, not on the Pope, but on the apostles and the prophets. And I know y'all like to put that T and say apostles, but it's apostle with the T is silent. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone of the building, the foundation. Now think seriously about where you serve. Now I'm going to go to the Living Bible, only because in this next text that I'm going to read, it explains the thickness of the walls and the height and the width and the length, the width, yeah, of the city. Revelation 21, verse 15 and 7 through 17. This is the Living Bible. You can read it side by side, parallel with the King James. The angel held in his hand a golden measuring stick to measure the city and its gates and walls. When he measured it, he found it was a square as wide as it is long. In fact, it was in the form of a cube. 
for its height was exactly the same as its other dimensions, 1,500 miles each way. Then he measured the thickness of the wall and found it to be 216 feet across. The angel did these measurements according to man, not according to angelic, his angelic self. Now, for, for, for your information, the, and I looked this up, the entire state or island of Hawaii is 1,500 miles. The city, New Jerusalem, is 1,500 hundred miles. Long, wide, high. Just look at Hawaii on, on the map and just put it up and see how tall it is. Put it, level it and see how, 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 how wide it is. That's what it is. It's the largest American island. That's Hawaii. New Jerusalem is the size of Hawaii in all directions. Height, width, length. Maine, from Maine to Florida is approximately 1,500 miles nearly 30 hours traveling, not by flying. Because this spectacular city is so beautiful, many have a hard time coming to grips with how splendid it's going to be. And that's all right, because Hebrews 1, I'm sorry, Hebrews 11, 8 through 9, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he had, which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. He ain't know where he was going. All he knows is God said, go. Don't that say something about us? Well, God, you told me to go, but where am I supposed to go? You just start walking. You just start driving. I, you just start packing. I'll show you where to go. Act on faith. When I speak, you move. Amen. So he said, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. He ain't know. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Not was God, is God. Why would anybody in their right mind think that this city is less than sensational? When the architect itself is the same God who created all things. New Jerusalem worship. It's going to be completely different from ours. The things we use to help us worship today can also be a distraction from our worship things like the building is so nice or the building is raggedy. The music or music system, the customs, the traditions, all of the stuff that people got to go through. Um, certain clothing you got to wear if you this and you that can't wear that. Oh, it's such a mess. Amen. So forth. None of that stuff is going to be an issue in New Jerusalem because our only focus of worship is not going to be our attire. It's not going to be uh, how we do our hair. Whether it's not going to be um, what songs going to be sung. And I don't like no nope, none of that. Our total object of worship is going to be only on the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. Period. We ain't coming to worship nothing else. Praise God. Some folks worship church buildings. It's a mess. Bless the name of Jesus. This is what Jesus said. He said, I am the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He says, I am the first and the last. And these are terms that nobody but Jesus um, can, 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 can claim because he's from the beginning into the middle into our ending. He's always been, he always will be. He was not created. He had a body created, but he himself has always been the word or the said of God. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking unto Jesus, or Yeshua, the author and finisher, or the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The Greek word, I'm going Greek on this, translated author in, in this verse as captain or chief leader or prince. Then the Greek letter of, of uh, that, that, the Greek word that declares perfecter or finisher or completer. So if we read that he is the chief leader and the completer of our faith. We put it all together. Jesus is the originator of the faith. And if we allow him, he would steer 
and guide our faith. He watches over our faith. He cares for our faith. He created and sustains our faith. He says, I've given each of you a measure of faith. What you do with it, you, you can grow it or you can let it stay dormant. But everybody that's born has a measure of faith. If you don't believe, say, I ain't got no faith. If you don't believe you got faith, you sit in a chair. You don't know whether or not that chair is going to, you don't know if it's wearing out. You just sit in a chair. You don't, you don't care about it. You get in the car. You, that's faith. You get on a plane. God knows that's faith. You get on a boat, going on a cruise, or going on a ferry, going from one city, one, one town to the next, whatever. It's faith. You go outside and go for a walk. You know you're walking by faith. Praise God. When you lay down at night, you expect to wake up in the morning. That's faith. Bless the name of Jesus. So, and, and, and so he creates and sustains our faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And if we want to sustain our faith, we have to hear the word of God on a daily basis. And, and, and I have to get myself sometimes because you can have your Bible read to you. Praise God. So many ministries no longer preach or, or share or teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the power of salvation. No wonder people ain't getting saved. Praise God. They'll teach money. They'll, they'll preach about their money. they preach about what they got and how blessed you can be if you give such and such and so much and this, that, and the third. But where's the gospel? He said, preach the gospel. Teach the gospel. Share the gospel. The gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ. Not how much money you can get. Not what you drive, where you live, or how many people you got. But the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Ain't nothing more important. And nobody care about who won the Super Bowl, who won the, 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 I, I'm not a sports fan, so who won the hockey, which I do kind of like, amen, who won the hockey or, or the soccer or, or the Olympics, which I have, mm -mm. and, and we get so caught up in all this foolishness, where's the gospel, this is why folk come in unsaved and leave out unsaved, we have to come back to what the Lord said, teach and preach what the Lord said, praise God, because let me tell you something, if we leave the gospel of Jesus Christ out of the preaching and teaching, our sermons and studies, there's no manna from heaven, there's no water from the rock, there's no refuge from the storm, there's no healing for the sick, there's no life after death. If we leave Christ out, we left out the sun of the day, the moon and the stars out of the night, we leave out the waters out of the sea, the floods out of the river, the, the foods out of the river, the, the harvest out of the year, the soul out of the body. And the joy out of the glory if we leave Jesus out. We got nothing. We, 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 we rob the people of everything that God's got for them by talking about who won the boxing match and who won the game. I, I ain't interested in that. Who cares? It, they ain't give me no money. It, I didn't bet on that game. It don't make no difference to me. My thing is, what you going to tell me that God says? What you going to tell me that's going to help me make it through just in case I can't get to prayer? night or I can't get the Bible study. What's going to take me through the week? Can I feast on the meal that, that, that you've given me? Um, a lot of people don't like leftovers, but sometimes when you, when you cook the food and, 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 and you eat it when you cook it, but then when you let it leave, you leave it over the, the seasoning and stuff, they begin to settle down on the inside. So the second time you eat it, it tastes better than the first time you had it. Praise God. And, and that's what we need. Lord, I'm going to eat it now. But later on, when I need it, it's sit in my body. It's sit in my spirit, my soul, and my mind, and my thoughts. Lord, I, it's seasoned now. And, and so it, it, it tastes so much better. And now I get so much strength for it because I, I got it on, on the Sabbath. Or if that's when you go to church or Sunday when you go to church. Amen. I got a full meal. And I, it's going to carry me from for the whole week. I can I can live off of it because I can I can take bits and pieces pieces of it and then hide the rest in my heart until I need some more and then eat some more of it. But if all you telling me is nonsense and foolishness and you joking, that's not gonna take me through. If you're not gonna tell me about my sin, that's not gonna help me out. If you're gonna not gonna tell me that there's a remedy for my sin and how to get that remedy, it's not doing me any good. If you're not gonna tell me about how much the Lord loves me and He's going to play, prepare a place for me, and you're not gonna share with me Revelation. 22 praise God it ain't doing me no good you took it you robbed us so there's no worthwhile serving or preaching that if you leave leave Jesus out of the equation it ain't worth listening to you and every child of God needs to run Isaiah 41 and 4 who have performed and done it calling the generations from beginning I the Lord 
am the first and with the last I am he. I'm with the first person that was born and I'm with the last person that's going to be born. I'm he. Revelation 22 verse 20 and 21. Who testifies of these things saying surely I come quickly. I'm coming. Um, amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. This is what John said. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. If, if the statement I am coming quickly were not enough. Jesus put the word surely before the statement and amen after the statement. So, so, so for certain, this is what he said, I am coming quickly, unexpectedly. So it will be, that's the amen, let it be so. In all actuality, the book of Revelation is a lesson on preparedness. We got to be prepared at all times. If we miss that out of the book, everybody be terrified and talk about the hailstones and the stuff. And yeah, we talk about that, but it's to prepare us so that we don't get into that. And, and when it, when it, when he said, even so come Lord Jesus in the Aramaic, the ancient word would be Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. John ends this, and I love this benediction. And I said, if I ever do benediction again, praise God, this is what I want to use. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's it. You ain't got to go through a whole thing. Praise God. But Paul did a little extra, which is not bad either. In 2 Corinthians 13 and 14, he said, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So be it, so shall it be. Listen, now now that's a benediction. It ain't, it ain't one of May the Lord watch between me and thee. Y'all, come, look the scripture up. It was a prayer between people that didn't trust each other. In other words, let the Lord watch between us because while we're absent from one another, because if you move that line to get more of my property, God sees you. That's what that prayer is about. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Pray like you want to. Ain't none of my business. I'm not a member. Amen. But I like this one. The grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Don't miss out on his coming. Please don't miss out. Um, don't miss out on the experience of the sights and the sound and the smell of the new atmosphere and, and the music and the magnificence of that golden city with 12 different gems in the foundation of a 216 foot thick wall. It, it's just, and it's transparent. So you'll see the names. You can see John, Peter, Bartholomew, Thaddeus. And it, it just keeps going. And you can look at this. Bless the name of Jesus. It's going to be so awesome. You don't want to miss all of that awesome, awesomeness of God. Amen. Living in the presence of Almighty God throughout eternity. It will never end. Praise God. Um, th there will be time but we're not governed by that time. But inside the city, I didn't say outside, it said inside the city, there's no darkness because the glory of the Lord and the Lamb are there. They gives it light. It's going, the glory, it's like the glory of the Lord is bouncing off of, of the, the transparent gold walls and the gemstones and it's reflecting all the light. Can you imagine the beauty? of that city while you have that crystal sea just coming from the throne not from a river not from a sea not from an ocean but from the throne of god himself now we have in our minds a throne where you're sitting like i'm sitting in a chair but we don't know what the the makeup of that throne will be in the city praise god but it said god is going even though this is so awesome to me it is god himself is going to be present but yet God himself engulfs all things. But his presence is going to be so great there that there will be no night necessary. And the lamb is going to be there. And they're both, they're sitting on the throne. They say, well, where's the Holy Spirit? Oh, he there. Because the spirit and the bride say, come. Now it could be, say, the spirit and the bride say, come, Lord Jesus. Or the spirit and the bride say, come to the wedding feast. Whichever one, the Lord is inviting us. To come and be with him. Don't push it. Don't listen. Anything that takes your attention or your focus off of praising God, it's not of God. 
I don't care if it's a man, woman, boy, girl, children, whatever. It's not of God. Anything that you got to focus on more than you focus on, that I'm talking about you have to. Anything that takes all of your time and all of your energy and, 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 and you just worn out. I wore myself out to a point back in the day. I wore myself out so with church and church stuff until I had a menstrual. And I told God, no, mm -mm, because what people will do when you die, they snot and cry. Some of them come and look at you and tell you how good you look. You're dead. I don't know how you could look good then. They said, how good you look and how well you was dressed. And they look at the pictures and talk about how nice you were. Folk ain't seen you in 5, 10, 20 years. Folk ain't spoke to you in 40 years. But yet they won't come to see you dead. I don't understand the morbidness, morbidity, morbidness of, of, of we got to go look at a body. I don't get it. Praise God. And, and my thing is with people, let's love one another and do for one another now. Some folks spend hundreds of dollars going to the cemetery to put flowers that they can't smell, and sometimes folk come and steal, and and and, and put have a whole bunch of flowers at the service, and, and wouldn't give that person fifty dollars while they was alive. I don't understand it. You go sit in the cemetery and have lunch and a conversation with somebody that's not there, so you're touch, talking to a tombstone or whatever demons that are happen to be lurking around. They, I don't understand it. Our focus is shattered. Our focus is off. The Bible says when folk die, we're supposed to rejoice. When folk come into the world, we're supposed to cry. What do we do? We have baby showers. We have parties. We celebrate. When people die, what do we do? We cry and we boo. -hoo. We're backwards. We're backwards. Amen. And, and we, we as a people of God have to go back to being strange. Have to go back to being peculiar. Let people call you a holy roll. Somebody say, yeah, I'm holy, and my name's on the roll. Call me what you want. Amen. Then there are people that say, you ain't got no business telling nobody nothing. You, you's, a, you's a woman. I don't even argue with that. I, in fact, I don't think I ever have. I just give the word. Praise God. If, if, I tell people all the time, if it wasn't for a woman, you would have never had the word. Because Mary carried the word for nine months. Joseph didn't carry the word, and Joseph could not impregnate her because he had a curse in his line. In his lineage, Jeconiah was cursed. He was hung on a tree. That fell down through the generations. So Joseph couldn't be the biological father. Amen. It had to come through a virtuous woman. Amen. Praise God. And the woman carried the word. If the woman was good enough to carry the word and the prophetess Anna was good enough to speak over the baby Jesus when they brought it to the temple, amen, and, and, and Mary Magdalene, bless her heart, was good enough for Jesus to say, you go tell my disciples. I'm giving you a message to go tell the men where to meet me. Let them know I'm up and out. and I'm rich. They didn't even want to believe it. Praise God. They have forgotten what Jesus had told. Now, we can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I tell people all the time, when you're reading what Paul has said concerning certain things, understand the sign, understand the times, understand the Middle Eastern culture at that particular time. you got to understand. And then go to Joel. Joel prophesied in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh, my sons and my daughters. Go prophesy. They're going to declare the truth. Didn't say you're going to have to preach it. Just declare it. So there ain't nothing wrong with folk declaring the truth. Bless the name of Jesus. There were shepherdess in the word of God. It, it, it's, we, Lord, if we would stop, we fight and debate over nonsense why souls are dying and going to hell. If you don't have the message, Who's to say God hasn't given it to somebody else, but you dog the somebody else out so bad, the people won't listen, so they miss the message. That blood is on your hands. We have to learn. If God want to use a turkey to, to, to share the gospel, listen to the bird. Praise God. We got to get to a point. It's about the word. It's not about our color. It's not about our gender. It's not about our nationality. It's not about our language. 
It's about the word of God. Our focus has to be the word of God. Our agenda has to be to see Jesus and bring as many people into the kingdom as possible. That's supposed to be our agenda. We are so messed up. We, we want to win this award and that award. We want to get this accomplished and that accomplished. And everything is that we're doing is self-gratifying. What about Jesus? We got to go back, y'all. If we're going to experience Revelation 21 and, and, and 22, if we're going to experience the things, he said, I have not seen and ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that the Lord has prepared for those that love him. If we want to see these things and experience these things, we got to get back on focus. The Bible said in the last days they're going to be marrying and giving in marriage. And Lord knows they're still doing it. And, and, and they party and doing all of these things, having fun with this and that and the third. And then all of a sudden, the flood came. All of a sudden, Jesus said, I'm coming back quickly, unexpectedly. I'm coming like a thief in the night in the sense that you, you don't get prepared for the thief. You, it, you don't know when the thief is coming. Praise God. And, and so I'm coming back unexpectedly and unexpectedly soon and we have to understand that God's time is not our time it could be thousands of years and to him it's still quickly and it's still soon because he's not governed by time we are so whether he comes for us individually or whether he comes for us collectively he coming back and we have to be prepared amen we have to be ready bless the name of Jesus and, and we got to know this in our own soul. If, if there's a nervousness in you, if there's something that you're uncertain about, always go to God and say, God, I don't want to be lost. So I need you to help me. And he's there to help. Living with the Lord in eternity, we don't want to miss that. The new earth, we don't want to miss that. Everything is new. The heavens are new. There's going to be a new um, the, part of the heavens was the sun and the stars and the moon. All of that's going to be new on the outside of the city. There's going to be kings still on the earth. There's going to be people in leadership position and they're going to bring all of the stuff, their glory into New Jerusalem and worship before the Lord. So we know there's still going to be things going on. Glory to God. There's going to be things that we can eat, things that we can drink. And, and people talking about wine. Well, Jesus drank wine. Let me tell you something. The wine that they drank in the old days is not the mess that they got in the liquor store today. It's a total difference. Amen. And, and when Jesus made that new wine, it tasted different. It wasn't a fermented wine. That's why when the, the, the man said, the governor said, like, whoa, this is this is this is better than anything you sold us. I mean, usually people give us the best and then give the, the messed up wine later when everybody's full. And, and and we have to understand, he didn't say when everybody's drunk. He said when everybody's had their fill. And, and so we have to stop breathing into stuff that God never said was there. Let us honor the word of God. Let us walk in the word of God. Let us stop debating and arguing about who did this and who should do this and who shouldn't do that. Because when it's all said and done, it's going to be God who's going to have the final say so. There's nowhere in the word of God where God said, I don't want this gender to preach and I don't, and I, and I, or I don't want that gender to preach. He told the apostle, preach the word, teach the word, share the word. Go forth and share the word. And to share the word, you don't have to have a license to share the word. You can invite people to sit down in your house and have a nice Bible study. You're sharing the word. There's nothing wrong with you sitting down with your family and sharing the word. There's nothing wrong with that. And with COVID, doing what it does, amen, sometimes you need to stay home, amen, and just share the word and meditate with the Lord, amen. Let's do right by God. Give God some time. Amen. All he, he's waiting. And he wants you. And he loves you. And he wants you to spend eternity with him and the Lamb, the Holy Spirit. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything that you've done, what you're doing, what you're going to do. We thank you for this time. 
We thank you, Lord, and I pray that it's been an encouraging word to the people. I pray that somebody gives their lives to you for real. I pray that somebody makes a recommitment to you, a rededication to you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you deal with the hearts of the people. If the heart is a little heart, circumcise the heart. Lord God, get into the minds of the people. Give them a deaf ear to the enemy and flesh in the name of Jesus, but let them hear you clear. We thank you, O oh God, for your word written, spoken, and living. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our high priest. We thank you for being our intercessor. We thank you, O oh Lord, for being our lamb slain. We just thank you for being our redeemer, our keeper. We thank you for being our righteousness. We thank you for your grace, your love, your mercy, and your peace. We thank you that you're soon to come. Lord, you said you're coming back quickly. Folks are laughing and joking and making fun of the of the rapture of the saints or or they're making fun of, of the church being gone, Lord, but it's not going to be funny when it happens. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, make your people ready. And those that are still in the world and participating that are of the world that are going to be saved, I ask that you begin to deal with their hearts even now. Lord, deal with their hearts even now and get into them and, and, and give them that urgency that they need you right now. And Lord, when they come, you won't turn them away. You said that all that come into you, you won't turn them away. And we thank you. Let your Holy Spirit begin to draw the people. There are any sick under the sound of my voice. I ask that you heal that you heal them according to what they need in their body. And Lord God, if you say that your grace is sufficient, then let them rest and, and be grateful for your grace that will take them through anything that they physically have to go through. And we give you glory because there's no other God that we want to honor, no other God that we want to praise, no other God that we want to worship. We thank you for being Yahweh in the name of Yeshua, your only begotten Son. And we give you honor and we give you glory. Lord, let your grace and your peace and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest on your people all through the week in Jesus' name. And we say happy birthday to Deja Juanita. Uh, Faith and Amen. It's her birthday today, so we shout out to her. Happy birthday, Deacon and Faith. And praise God. God bless all of you who have joined us this morning, and we're going to stick with the mornings. Yes, Amen. Praise God. We're going back to the mornings. We're still off on Tuesdays until um, you want to say different. But Friday nights, we're going to keep it at 7:30. Uh, praise God, instead of 8 o'clock, we're going to keep it at 7.30. So we're back to Sunday morning at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Some of y'all is 7.30. Some of you, it's 9.30. But praise God, we're back on that time schedule. We ask that you continue to keep DJ and I in your prayers as we continue to study the Word of God and, and study what's going on in the world so that we can share with you whatever God wants us to share with you so you can be prepared. People of God, I say this constantly, learn how to can some stuff. And when I say can, I'm talking about jars, mason jars. Learn how to put some stuff in preserve. Learn how to get you a sealing machine. We got a machine that seals uh, the food so that you can cook the food or make the food up and have it sealed, vacuum sealed. Get you invest in something that, that will, will help sustain you. We don't know what this winter, Lord willing, will, will, will bring, praise God, but we see what the prices are doing. Uh, start getting organic stuff. Save the seeds of the organic stuff, and then replant the seeds for yourself in your own home. You can do all of these things. If you don't know, use YouTube. That's what it's for. Praise God. Or go into Google, and they'll teach you all these things. Bless the name of Jesus. I got stuff growing in the yard now, getting out of hand. Praise the name of Jesus. But God is a good God. Be prepared. He's teaching us. If we miss the preparedness of the book of Revelation, all it is is a book that we read. We have to understand from the beginning to the end, it's all about being prepared. Be ready. And I, and I plead with you with everything that I know, please don't miss God. Please don't miss glory. Don't miss out. On Revelation 22 please don't don't go through the great tribulation because you don't have to just get ready and get right now put God first 
Not people, not situations, not things, but put God first. If you put God first, watch him give you a joy and a peace that you didn't have before. God bless and keep you always is my prayer. Remember this. God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Have a great rest of your week. This is the first day. Enjoy it and the rest of your week. God bless you. Keep you is my prayer. If you want to donate, plant a seed, y'all already know what to do. Love me some Jesus and I love me some more.